brings me to another point, self-serving. That takes me to what I now call confirming letters. Because I used to call them self-serving letters, but that sounded really self-serving, so now I call them confirming letters. Because what we're going to do now is confirm to our client, or to our title officer, or to our escrow officer, or to our mortgage loan officer. We're going to confirm a conversation that we have. And we're going to do it in writing. And if we have a buyer, for example, that says, I will not pay money for a physical inspection, we're going to confirm that discussion by sending that buyer a letter. And we're going to tell them that on this date, at this time, you informed me that it was your intention not to obtain a physical inspection. And I want you to know that I strongly recommend against that course of action. If you change your mind, and I hope you do, please contact me well in advance of removing any associated contingencies. Now that's a confirming letter. And you might say, well gosh, Kathy, all you're doing is protecting yourself. No, I'm not. What I'm doing is showing my buyer that I care enough about what he does or she does that I want to go on the record that the decision that you're contemplating is not in your best interest. And I care enough about you and about what happens to you down the road to make sure we put this out on the table and have a detailed record of it. So they are not, in writing, verbal conversations are irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. Because when you get into a court of law or you get in front of an arbit arbiter, anytime you're in front of a trier of fact, they're going to look at you and say, really, you had that conversation? Mrs. Byer, do you recall that conversation with Kathy? Nope. No. <laughs> nope. So unless it's in writing, it didn't happen. And confirming letters can be one of the best tools we have, not to protect our assets, but to protect our clients' interests. And it really goes to that. that that is my mantra, that is what I believe in, that is what our company believes in. We've got to protect these clients sometimes from themselves because they often want to make choices that are what they call penny wise and pound foolish. We've got to make sure they don't do that. Did you have a question? Someone had a question? No. Yes. Oh, I have a question. Isn't there a form? We have a form for that. Does yeah. that suffice? There is a form that Coldwell Banker has. It's called Acting Against the Advice of Broker, and it can be conformed to whatever situation, and you can certainly use that absolutely. But there's nothing wrong with just a standard confirming email as well, as long as you cover the issue. Absolutely. But with that, well, you can't. Let's get. You can't make somebody sign something. You can't say to a to a buyer, you have to sign this acting against the advice of broker letter, or I won't let you close escrow. You, you, we don't have that kind of power. So either way, you can't compel the signature. You can ask for it, you can ask for the acknowledgement, but it isn't always going to happen. What's <coughs> important is that we sent it and that we can verify it was received, right? It's that verifying that it was received. So sometimes an email, if you use the uh, sent and received, or the received and read receipts, received and read receipts, now you have something. If you just hand it to them and they don't acknowledge it in writing, it's a little harder because now it's just your oral testimony. So both would be the way I would recommend it, in person and via email. Okay? What about the buyer's inspection? You could use a buyer inspection. For this particular instance, I was giving you an example of anything a buyer might do or a seller might do that would not be in their best interest. And I chose the physical inspection as an example. But there are waivers of all inspections, and absolutely yes. But you know what? I would say that if I were really focusing not on just the, the uh, insulation for ourselves, if I were focusing on letting the buyer know it was important, I would have the letter saying, I'm asking you to reconsider because I think this is important to you. And that's, you're still insulated with the waiver. You're insulated with acting against the advice of a broker. But I would like that personal dialogue about why it's important. Not that it's required, but I think it would be a nice, a nice touch.